They want to try to tell you who to cheer for and try to tell you who to boo. Oh, no, the Twitter executives, they're sitting there in those chairs. Quick, somebody say something to them. Oh, here comes Tim Pool. He's going to destroy them. Tim Pool. The same trick, Jogo. When the YouTube ad apocalypse came out, diverted from what was actually happening, made it seem like the people who were being censored were actually, oh, but they, they should have had their business together. Should have had their business plan straight. Then they wouldn't have to worry about relying on YouTube. What? Diverting from the fact that they're using this to come against people's freedom of speech in a slick way. And now here he is again. And people over here propping him up. Like idiots. Did you not see what this man said? I'm going to let you hear some of the stuff. It was a long video, but I give you the straight intent of what he was saying in these little short videos. It's going to show you. So let, so let me ask you, um, the rules you have are not based in U.S. law, right? U.S. law doesn't recognize restrictions on hate speech. It's considered free speech. So if you want to stand in a street corner and yell the craziest things in the world, you're allowed to. On your platform, Twitter, you're not allowed to. So... Even in that sense alone, your rules do have an ideology behind them. I don't completely disagree. I think, you know, I don't want harassment. Um, but the reason I bring this up is getting into the discussion about democratic health of a nation. So I think it's, it, it can't be disputed at this point that Twitter is extremely powerful in influencing elections. You know, I, I'm pretty sure you guys published recently a bunch of tweets from foreign actors that were trying to meddle in elections. Mm -hmm. So even you as a company recognize that foreign entities are trying to manipulate people using this platform. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 there's, there's a few things I want to ask beyond this, but if wouldn't it be important then to just, as a, at a certain point, Twitter becomes so powerful in influencing elections and giving access to even the president's tweets that you should allow people to use the platform based under the norms of U.S. law? First Amendment, free speech, the right to expression on the platform. This is becoming too much uh, of a, it's becoming too powerful in how our elections are, are taking place. So even if you are saying, well, hate speech is our rule and a lot of people agree with it, if at any point one person disagrees, there's still an American who has a right to this, you know, to access to the public discourse. And you've essentially monopolized that. And, and not completely, but for the most part. So isn't there some responsibility on you to guarantee at, at a certain extent, less regulation happen? Right. Like, look, if you, if you recognize foreign governments are manipulating our elections, then shouldn't you guarantee the right to an American to access this platform to be involved in the electoral process? I'm not so, sure I see the, the, the tie between those things, but I will address one of your points, which was uh, we're not we're a platform that serves the world. So we're a global uh, 75 percent of the users of Twitter are outside of the United States. Oh, no, right, right, right. So we don't uh, apply laws of just one country when we're thinking about it. We think about um, how do you have a global standard that can meet the threshold of as many countries as possible because we want all the people in the world to be able to participate in this I, conversation. I, and, 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 so, and also meet elections like the Indian election coming up as well. Right. And yeah. I'm, 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 my understanding is you were also accused of being biased against conservatives in India recently. There was a report on that, as well as you held up a sign that said something offensive about the Brahmin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in that sense, even in other countries, you're accused of the same things that you're being accused of by American conservatives. I think that the situations are very, very different. Um, and I don't think that, that the ideologies in play are the same at all. Well, so the, the reason could I bring you, up... Can we clarify that? Because I'm well, not aware I just, of the case. I, I, I'm not sure what you're talking about, but we, we did have our uh, vice president of public policy testify in front of Indian parliament uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he was they were really focused on election integrity and safety and abuse and harassment um, of women and political figures and the likes. So, so my, my, my concern, I guess, is I, I recognize you're a, globe, you're a company that serves the world, but as an American, I have a concern that the democracy I live in, the democratic republic, I'm sorry, and the democratic <laughs> functions are healthy. One of the biggest threats is, you know, Russia, and Iran, uh, Russia, Iran, China. They're trying to meddle in our elections using your platform, and it's effective. So you heard what the man said? Yeah, I heard him. He said, <laughs> Yeah, I know. Man, lame as a mug, bro. But when you really break down what the man said, he said that, oh, uh, our elections are being threatened from the likes of Russia, 
And, and this is the issue. And he's talking to the freaking Twitter execs. This is a person who's supposed to know better. And instead decides to push the lie. The trick joker says, and they are effective. No, 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 no. They always seem to leave out the key information. Revealed U.S. spy operation that manipulates social media. Military sock puppet software creates fake online identities to spread pro-American propaganda. This is from way back in 2011. This type of stuff has been happening since Bush. We see here, it's not just one report. U.S. military launched spy operation using fake online identities. What are we talking about? Software letting people control 10 personas, each replete with background, history, supporting details, and cyber presences that are technically, culturally, and geographically consistent. The software would be able to let personas appear to originate in nearly any part of the world. So then when he goes on to say, oh, the Russian, oh, the Brazilian, no, mm-mm. You have to also add this information because it could be these military accounts that are pretending that they're out of Brazil or pretending that they're out of Russia. But no, we the news don't talk about it that much like that. I don't give a crap, Joker. That means they in on it. How could you leave out information this important? This related to the topic. And I know you want to say I'm making it up, but here it is right here. Way back in 2010, this is what they wanted. Personas must be able to appear to originate in nearly any part of the world. How, how are you okay with that? Always seems to slip through the cracks. And then also this. State Department gets $40 million to fund new propaganda troll farm. This is United States. This, this is never mentioned when we're talking about oh, the online trolls, never. But we see it here. So these people are not to be trusted, these Tim Pools and these Joe Rogans, Fox News and MSNBC and all these other jokers, omitting the most important information. Who are the trolls in the United States troll farm? What are they doing? Do you think they are possibly meddling in the United States election? Or do you think they are sharing cat videos? Hmm. Brownie videos. Hmm. I'm just going to tell you, it's definitely them. So much so that you've actually come out and removed many people. You know, Covington was apparently started by a account based in Brazil. You know, the Covington scandal where this fake news goes viral was reported by CNN that it was, a, it was a dummy account. They were trying to prop it up and they were pushing out this out of context information. So they do this. They use your platform to do it. You, you've now got a, a platform that is so powerful in our American discourse that foreign governments are using it as weapons against us. And you've taken a stance against the, the laws of the United States. I don't mean like against, like you're breaking the law. I mean, you, you have rules that go beyond the scope of the U.S., which will restrict American citizens from being able to participate. Meanwhile, foreign actors are free to do so, so long as they play by your rules. So our elections are being threatened. And what I'm trying to bring up is that if Twitter refuses to acknowledge this problem, you are facing regulation. I don't, I don't know if you care about that. But at a certain point... Sorry, which, which problem? If, if you're going to restrict American citizens from participating on a platform where even the president speaks, and, and it's essentially you have a private, privately owned public space, uh, if, if I could use an analogy that would be most apt, and you've set rules that are not recognized by the U.S. In fact, when it came to a Supreme Court hearing, they said hate speech is not a violation. It's actually protected free speech. So there's actual odds. So there might be someone who says, I refuse to live by any other means than uh, what the Supreme Court has set down. That means I have a right to hate speech. You will ban them. That means your platform is so powerful, it's, it's being used to manipulate elections, and you have rules that are not recognized by the government to remove American citizens from that discourse. So as a private platform, you've become too powerful to not be regulated if you refuse to allow people free speech. It about foreign governments was just to explain the, the, the power that your platform holds and how it can be weaponized. We'll, we'll separate that now. When Antifa shows up to Berkeley and bashes a guy over there with a bike lock, that is suppressing his speech. Right. That's an act of physical violence. However, when Antifa links hands and blocks a door so that no one can go to an event, that is also legally allowed. Right. So what you're saying is that if someone is engaging in behavior, such as going on Twitter and shouting someone down re relentlessly, that's something external to what happens in, in, in the world under the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. I am allowed to scream very close to you and not let you speak in public. 
But on Twitter, you don't allow that. So there's a dramatic difference between what Twitter thinks is okay and what the U.S. government thinks is okay, how our democracy functions and how Twitter functions. The issue I'm pointing out is that we know Twitter is becoming extremely important in how our public discourse is occurring, how our culture is, uh, culture is developing, and who even gets elected. So if you have rules that are based on a global policy, that means American citizens who are abiding by all of the laws of our country are being restricted from engaging in public discourse because you've monopolized it. Can I counter that, though? Because these foreign governments are restricted by the same rules. So if they violate so, those same rules, they will be, they but, will be removed. So if so, they play within right, those listen, rules, they can participate in the discourse, even if they are just trying to manipulate our elections. On the other hand, if the people that are on the platform play by those rules, they can also counteract. Unless their ideology goes in line with U.S. law and is legally allowed, as opposed to what you allow. So foreign governments can, can absolutely keep making new accounts and keep botting and keep manipulating. They can even post things that will go viral and then get banned and not care. Right. But a private American citizen can say, here's my opinion. I refuse to back down. I see what you're saying. You will ban him. So we can see that at a certain point, you have a lot, you, 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 Twitter is slowly gaining, in, in my opinion, too much control but at a certain point, you should not have the right to control what people are allowed to say. No private or uh, look, I'm a social liberal. I think we should regulate you guys because you are unelected officials running your system the way you see fit against the wishes of a democratic republic. And there are people who disagree with you who are being excised from public discourse because of your ideology. That terrifies me. Problem number one, this guy keeps pushing the Russian interference lie. Second problem, he's pushing for social media regulation. You heard him. There ain't no difference, well, ain't too much difference between him and a politician calling for it. Only difference is he has that armadillo back on his head. You remember when those politicians were sitting across from the big tech executives saying what they're doing sucks, trying to appeal to us younger folk, trying to make us think, oh, yeah, they, they in with us. They, 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 they doing what we need. Talking about privacy. Acting like they care about our privacy. No, they don't. These are the same people that approve the Patriot Act. These are the same people that push these psychological operations to take away our freedom of speech. So why in the heck would we want them to regulate the social media? And here we have this trick joker doing it. And they all do it. These propped up pieces of trash come out here. And then we're supposed to cheerlead for these people. Oh, Tim Pool obliterates them. No. Look at the underlying fact of what's happening. Look at what he's really saying. And I've seen it on Alex Jones, too. I've seen it from Paul Joseph Watson, too. They call for regulations against speech. Even while they're allegedly... Oh, we really care about freedom of speech. Oh, but Antifa, oh, bike locks, oh, uh, uh, proud boys. No, it's an act. That whole Antifa crap is just left versus right crap. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, yeah, we don't want the right to get censored. But when it's time, they're going to start calling for the left to be censored. And then the left is just going to call for the right to be censored. And then before you know it, everybody's censored. These jokers don't give a crap. Don't fall into this bull crap. Tim Pool has zero credibility concerning this topic. Matter of fact, Maine just got zero credibility. Red, silver, J. Huh. All I gotta say. <laughs>